Hello, welcome to the Faking Filmation live stream campaign update, end of April. I think it's the 29th today. It is so good to be with you all. I see people in the chat already. Thanks, Playmo2. Uh, I don't even know where to start. I can't start divulging how I feel about everything yet on my own because this time, instead of me just rambling on for 40 minutes, I've decided to ramble on with a good friend of mine whom you might know quite well. At least I would hope that you would know given you're tuning in to this whole thing. So ladies and gentlemen, let me bring on the uh, the man himself, the he-man himself, Mr. James Etoc. There he is. <laughs> two, two people, two people rambling now. This is good. We've got double, ra double rambling. Well, you know, might as well be consistent about it all, right? Absolutely. So how Ooh. are you doing, my friend? As um, we kind of briefly mentioned off off live stream, I just, uh, just had a little two-hour nap. So, I mean, nap. I think when it goes beyond maybe 30, 15 to 30 minutes, it goes from beyond a nap to actually just sleep. So I was asleep for two hours. Well, you know, that's okay. We don't know what's going to happen on this live stream. That rest might come in need. I know it's been a long campaign for both of us on different fronts. You have been a relentless promotion machine, uh, creating these iconic, fun, cartoony graphics that I love. And one of my favorite moments is when I think it was on Monday. I'm like, hey, look what I did here with Granamir. I'm like, this is going to be so cheesy to show the stuff that you've been doing, which is all like HD with like perfect backgrounds. And here's my little... <laughs> Photoshop attempt at being like James, but you know whatever. Hey, the, every 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 little thing does the job, right? As simple as that. I I could spend four hours putting something together, and three people might see it, and then equally I could just do a little old uh, 1990s image, and someone goes, "Oh my god!" and a hundred people gravitate towards that. So you never know. I think personally we should just do more uh, campaign images of just hold, us holding fake in film, uh, fake information toys. Bloody hell, of us holding origins figures. And then um, people be like, oh, my God, like, 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 because everybody loves the Origins figures. And then it's like, ha-ha, suckers, we tricked you. It was Everybody's <laughs> obsessed with those Rise of Evil two-packs right now. If we could get, like, a Rise of Faking Filmation two-pack with James oh, and myself. That would be the greatest figures ever. The action well, features they, on those They would alone. be pretty good. <laughs> exactly. What would your action feature be, James? Well, I think it would be... Uh... The ability you, that you can lay the figure down horizontally and he's suddenly in action sleep mode. Just like, I think that would be, that's where I'd go, I think. I think it would probably make me like a Ram Man kind of action figure. You just squish my head so I can jump forward. I'm tackling it head on or, that makes or sense, something yeah. like that. So it's been a long month. Uh, how are how are you feeling about this campaign right now on my other browser window? I'm told that we are at seventy six thousand three hundred and two dollars. I mean, yeah, I think like prior to the prior to the campaign launching officially, you you said to me, and I think I've said this publicly a few times. You said to me, um, you know, for a campaign to be um, heading towards towards a success, you. Know, ten thousand dollars within maybe what like a day or two was it something like that within two days you need a, at least a quarter of your budget in in the first day or so and we were aiming for thirty thousand right. so i said we need to really get to ten thousand by the end of day one maybe by you know a day and a half into it yeah and i thought i thought wow that seems um that seems big but i'm sure rob knows what he's talking about and then but the the this the the initial goal of thirty thousand, I thought, oh, we'll probably get that. In my back of my mind, I may maybe said it to you. I can't remember for our, our multiple uh, conversations. I said, oh, I reckon we'll get that around about day twenty, day twenty five. We'll hit the thirty thousand mark. Then we go, hurrah! We did thirty thousand dollars. Fantastic, and we can make this project a reality. And then when we did that in day two, I thought, like, what? What happened now? And then when we hit what fifty thousand by day seven, which was our, our was that was our first stretch goal? Because fifty was, was it was our third stretch goal because we had our, our second stretch goal because at thirty seven and a half we promised that retro alternate disc slip cover where you created that highly illegal version that would be nice <laughs> to have printed. 
We're like, That's here's what best. James wants to do. We can't do it, but we this is what we're thinking. <laughs> oh, no, but I'm all about the high, highly illegal stuff, apparently. Um, That's like where your heart leads you for some it reason. It really is. It's like, I want to do this thing. It's like, you can't. It's like, I must. But, um, yeah. James, I here's $10 million. Develop your own action-adventure barbarian story. No, I'm going to take three and a half years of my <laughs> lives and some good collaborators, all our own money, and do something <laughs> we don't exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or that, so, we don't have the rights for that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's Versus how we that, roll yeah. for some reason. I, I don't know. Gluttons for punishment, I think, is a better term. But the um, yeah, that that uh, fifty thousand stretch goal. I, you know, even once once we hit the thirty, I thought, oh, maybe we'll hit the fifty by day twenty or so. And then we did that within seven days. How can we? How can we be? How can this happen? And then there was the sixty five thousand. It was like, oh, we've hit that. And then. The, I forget what the next one was, but it just, that's the thing, it's, it's been such a, um, you know, snowball effect, like rolling down a mountain, just gaining more and more momentum, and it's, you, I mean, obviously, you know, we knew it was going to, you know, initially, it does that, and then it kind of tapers out, which it has done, but it's done that, yeah. but kind of, wait, kind of little blips here and there, and still, yep. while it's tapered, it's been a real, it's still been great, because you look at where we are now, and, you know, we set the eighty thousand dollar goal, and it's like, I mean, we we may get there. I'll I'll promise like nine minutes of um, you know new content because to to the return of fake episode because that may generate a bit more interest in um, the campaign. I'm not saying that definitely had an effect, but clearly I that was something I thought. Well, we're probably not going to get to eighty. So, right, ready your graphics tablets because um, we're going to be doing nine minutes of new footage. It's simple as that. The way it's looking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm crossing my fingers. I, I'll t I want to talk about that stretch goal in a minute. Yeah. I want to rewind a bit because you're right. This thing has been like a, a freight train. And that's kind of where, like I said, James, I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting her coast. We're going to see where <laughs> it goes when we need to dive in and kind of take it off autopilot because it's it's created a life of its own. A lot of the plans that I had for this campaign became completely obsolete <laughs> by the end of the first week for good reasons. And then that's when we started talking about different stretch goals. And the one that got a lot of people excited, of course, was that mini comic uh, that you said, hey, what about a mini comic? I'm like, well, that would actually be a really cool kind of, you know, insert for the DVD or the Blu-ray, because that's a thing. And mini comics are, of course, related to masters. And then you started figuring out what that could be. Have you decided what that's going to be? You were teasing people that it could be a prequel or a sequel. So Why is, is that was, still I, up I, in the air? I told you there's actually like three. There was a prequel, sequel, or just almost like a um, a mini comic retelling of the events of the Return of Focus. You do almost like a, a truncated version. I do like that challenge of taking, at the time, a 31 minute cartoon and turning it into a traditional mini comic, which, for the love of me, I can't remember like 12, 14 pages or something. But um, but now obviously the mini, uh, sorry, the the Return of Faker itself is going to be nine minutes longer. So now it's maybe, like, well, is, maybe, maybe. Sorry. sorry, I'm being, I'm jumping ahead of myself there. So at the same yeah, time, nothing is done until that bell rings, James. Let me just tell you, nothing yeah. is done until that bell rings. We are seeing lots of people behind the scenes adjust their pledges like crazy. Like it is a roller coaster. People adding stuff on, people taking stuff on, people jumping tiers, people going down a tier but adding add-ons as a result, and like saving two or three bucks, and then they decide to go up. Like it is nonstop. My phone is like going like crazy. So we're not <laughs> so there. Not until the bell rings at the end yeah so oh, well, i won't jump ahead but yeah in terms of that what however the you know if the nine minutes does happen then that changes what the return of faker is in terms of story structure and then it becomes well then now what is the mini comic so i think but at the same time i'm not worried about it. it's like oh challenge right? i like a good challenge I, I don't so much like a legal challenge but i do like a good challenge so yeah there's there's plenty to um keep me occupied and others creatively which is really beautiful and i must say like i've got to give you a shout out because obviously you know for all my kind of promotion and stuff like like you say a promotion machine you've um there's no way i could have handled the kickstarter campaign and even come up with some of the ideas for stretch goals and and just i can imagine it's a lots of plate spinning trying to, I, I i ran a kickstarter back in 2011 for serial geek and it failed and i was like oh okay well that was that i'm never doing kickstarter again so i can i can only imagine how yeah, how many plates you're spinning, how complicated it is to, to, to run a Kickstarter. So so thank you for making it much easier on my end because when someone goes, hey, 
how do I do this? I'm just like, Rob will tell you. <laughs> I don't know. Let's ask at Rob McCallum. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and you're like, oh, he's tagged me in something. What what groovy thing is that? Oh, I'll ask another question. But we're happy to answer yeah. questions. Or Rob's happy to answer questions. <laughs> Yeah, where, where and when I can. And I mean, I, I'm not really doing anything, James. I just hit a button. It's doing it all by itself. This is like, I'm not, I'm not doing a single thing. I just hit Kickstarter, Faker, and all of a sudden money started to come in without any other planning whatsoever. I, it's pretty much I like know. how the, we made the cartoon. We we went to, I think Doosan opened up um, the animation clip art studio and just pressed make Faker cartoon. That happened. I mean, that's. What, I think genuinely, that's what some people think. Is, oh, well, when they see faking filmation, they'll see you guys in mocap suits, like circa, <laughs> you know, twenty seventeen. They'll see you input all one hundred and thirty episodes of He Man, and you just collect, the, you know, click the character, and then all of a sudden you act that oh, way. You yeah. know, you're throwing the sword back and forth, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're doing doing that. The laugh. Oh, I, I love the idea. Yeah. Of just me running around in a mocap suit, and then that 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 footage becoming. Uh, I don't know, He-Man in some way. I haven't been too generous to myself. It wouldn't be He-Man. I'd probably be, yeah, some other character. Tila. Yeah, I probably, I'd actually, I'd, I'd, uh, and I won't go there. But yeah, so yeah, I probably could do it. <laughs> the hardest shot I saw from that archival footage is the jump down into frame, where like you're, you're, you just dropped into frame, and we're looking like through your legs with your knees, and Doosan's there going, just shaking his head. That was the hardest <laughs> shot that you guys had to do like 57 takes on. Oh man, jump in and just do sounds like you've got to land, you've got to nail the landing. And that's not yeah. so much the landing, yeah. it's the jiggle of my butt cheeks when I land. That's yeah, the, the, the jiggling, the ankle rolls, I just- <laughs> The ankle roll. It's just, oh. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's, tough, that's a little behind tough. the scenes pro that you'll see eventually <laughs> on the documentary. You will see this rare footage of me in a mocap suit and do sound with a stick, sometimes a whip, just cracking it and making sure I do the right movements and stuff. So yeah. I want to give a shout out to some of the people in our chat yeah, sure. that are, are furiously typing away as we live stream both to our faking filmation page and to my personal YouTube channel so I can benefit the most out of this. Uh, <laughs> we got Play Motu, like I said at the beginning. Hi, how you do? We got Silver Knight Kyle. Hello. We've got Legends of Grey Skull Podcast. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to see you. We've got Thomas as well. It's been an awesome campaign smashing. Um, we've got finite joy. No ladies here, huh? Well, I don't know if there are some ladies here. We'll find out as we keep going. Legends of Grayskull. Rob's Faker collection is growing. I I did a little display over my shoulder right here. It's oh, yeah. it's hard to see, but we got classics Faker. We've got uh, 2000X, and we've got a Mega Constructs right at the bottom. That's hard to see. Just just a little set deck, folks. This is how the pros do it. This that is how we uh, you had to um, get to get through. Was it Wizard or Toy Fair magazine? I remember Toy Fair. Had. Yeah. Fair, yeah, it was that and Moss Man, I think, the two exclusives you had to mail away from. God. Yeah, was and a... uh, She-Ra was Wizard World. That was, I, I had a She-Ra. There's a sad story behind that. But yeah, I had a She-Ra too. Well, Once. we'll save that for bonus features, because James, we can't talk unless <laughs> I'm rolling. Uh, Nathan says, what's up, everybody? Manuel says, hello, James and Rob. Hello back to you. Manuel, how you doing, man? Zach is saying, cannot wait for this. This is great. Uh, Joe Amato, the, the oh, center oh, of, of constant conflict, Joe Amato, and his masked persona. I got to let everybody in on a bet that has now been publicly posted on, on several threads. Joe Amato said that this will hit $79,000. And if it doesn't, he will unmask his visage. He oh, will, no, he will is... take off. Well, he said this will land between fifty-seven thousand and seventy-nine thousand dollars, and I said I I don't think it's going to do that, my friend. I mean, I love the confidence, and you know, uh, but James, you and I were talking early this morning. Like this has now surpassed the power of Grayskull campaign, which that, to both of us is mind. just because I mean, it's it's not a competition and it's not a direct comparison, but they're it two He-Man kickstarters, and Power of Grayskull is everything he-man so whether you just like new adventures or you just like the toys or mini comics that's there's a reason for you to get interested in that this is just filmation you know uh it's not quite the the whole scope i mean filmation obviously has a huge fan base when it comes to everything he-man it's probably the biggest subsection without question but uh i mean we're tackling other cartoon stuff so maybe that's why it's so maybe exciting it's like i I, I don't know. Like, when, when you messaged me this one and said we've surpassed um, the, the funding that Power of Grayskull received, I was like, 
surely. I mean, that would have, if you said that to me at the start of the campaign, I would have happily bet against that financial. I mean, like, there's no way we're even going to get close to that. And the fact that we've now surpassed it and, you know, who knows where we end up going, but it's just like, wow. Um, yeah, it's crazy. It's almost like people really want to see this documentary and Return of Faker. Well, I think that they probably want to see the Return of Faker a little bit more. The documentary might be a lost leader. I think people are going to be interested to see what happens. I think they want to see what you're going to do and what you're going to come up against. Everybody likes to watch James E. Talk wince and, you know, get in pain and get tortured. And I I love a that's, good that's, torture that's, show. That's Why not? That's channel. Get over there, get lads. <laughs> I've got personal footage of you, you know, doing some really interesting things to 99 Red Balloons. And again, when we start oh, yeah. painting your character, you do it's have uh, <laughs> the best part about this, everybody, is to make a Kickstarter trailer, you don't know what you need until you have all the pieces. So I said, James, send me everything. everything yeah. And then our, our shared folder started just populating with these these gems. I'm like, James, I need some some shots of you looking human and having fun like a down-to-earth guy. And then I'm getting like full-on choreographed like dance numbers and you know, the <laughs> interesting strange. nightlife activities and hobbies that I had never known. And suddenly this documentary is taking on like, I don't I don't want to say it's like Tiger King, but maybe <laughs> there's just some interesting <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, big shout out to Faith. Faith, you are awesome. Let me just say that you comment with GIFs for the most part or images on every post we make on Faking Filmation. It is not lost on us. Thank you for being such a yeah, strong supporter. You, Tiffany, the same thing. You, hey, you follow us uh, on multiple platforms. Uh, on, on Facebook, you you su subject yourselves to our, our content and on uh, Instagram and probably all on James stuff as well. Um, <laughs> thanks, John. I, I mean, this is only a corner of the collection, but I, I'm doing what I, what I can so far. Appreciate it. Uh, not too much else going in the chat. Lena says heart. So heart back to you. It's all about love in this community. There's two things on the agenda. I want to talk about specifically and get into the, the nuts and bolts, Mr. E talk. And the yes, first sir. one is the $80,000 stretch goal. Uh, and we were back and forth on what that number was going to be. And then I want to reveal our last add on for the campaign. Okay. And yeah. What that is. Let's start with this $80,000 stretch goal. And let's talk about what that actually entails. What, what is going on if we hit $80,000? So yeah, if we hit the, um, the 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 goal that we wouldn't even remotely have thought about when this campaign started of eighty thousand um, dollars, as a way of really selling it to people and getting people to pledge, um, I'll be adding. Sorry, I <laughs> myself, Dusan Kramer, probably tie get Yuka involved as well as as well as Keith Seymour, the original, the Fantastic Five that worked on the. Return the of Faker. Faker Five. The Faker Five. The fantastic Faker Five. Um, <laughs> that's what it's almost like the trial of the Faker Five. It's like the trial of the Chicago Seven. It would be us. In a, then there's another documentary. A documentary. Except for the trial is only you. Everybody else wasn't named in any lawsuits <laughs> yeah, or any pending does. prison sentence. It's like, I'll help you, but I'm not going to jail for you. Yeah, it's like, we're all going together, right, guys? Guys? Guys, it's just me. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the, the plan is. Um, uh, to add nine minutes to the the, the existing return. I mean, we finished the return of Faker. You know, it was finished in 2019. Some people have seen it. Others haven't. Well, sorry, others. Most haven't. <laughs> and um, Nobody has seen this. No, no. <laughs> so 31 minutes was done. And it was like, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the final cartoon. You've got the intro. Well, I say the intro. It was just the He-Man logo. Mars Universe goes up the screen, face to black. Then we get the title card because... At the time we were making it, Dusan and I just thought, ah, do really need to animate, reanimate the intro? We had a few ideas as well about how to mix it up, you know, make it the intro, but also, yeah, let's throw in that evil Master of the Universe reference instead of evil forces of Skeletor. Because Dusan and I love the little, you know, I would say Easter eggs, but um, little moments of uniqueness. So we were going to extend the Battle Cat transformation to what it originally was, where he roars, then leans back and leaps out of shot. It's like, wouldn't it be nice to actually do that? like create that transformation sequence new and also have Cringer from his standing position to the, the shaking position, which again was the full transformation, but that's to edit for, for time. So yeah, we do, we, we thought, um, you know, maybe we'll do that at some point. So with this nine minutes, it's like, right, I, I've got a list here, which uh, people will see at some point. 
hopefully, oh damn, I thought we're in HD, so I might be able to freeze that. But I wrote down a list of nine ideas of, and I'll speak to Dusan obviously about it, um, nine, nine ideas of expanding scenes. I don't want to give too much away because I really don't want to reveal it, but I thought of, um, yeah, I thought some pretty, pretty cool, um, pretty cool scenes to add, expand on others, make, excuse me, make he mans and Fakers fight a little bit longer without overcomplicating it. And some people have said to me, like, it took you three years to do 30 minutes. How long is it going to take you to do nine? And I thought, well, yeah, don't get me wrong, it, was, it will still take a while, but it will take a lot less because, one, we've got a stock library of animation we created for the 31 minutes. So if we need skeletal walking in a shot, looking down or doing something, we've got that material. Like Dusan brings it into um, yeah. Vegas, I think it is. The editing studio does all his magic. You got new scenes. Also, I think our, as as hectic as it got in that last few months, as we were racing to get it done for PowerCon, and then it never got shown. As we were racing to get it done, um, we kind of really found our stride, which was don't get me wrong, hectic. But Dusan was just knocking it out constantly. Like, oh, I need this scene, I need that scene. Um, the scheduling, like we, we planned it all really meticulously so the scenes would arrive and, you know, or I was cut, you know, it's just, it, it became like a well or I mean, the first two years were pretty well, well oiled, but this was like by, by year three <laughs> and especially the last few months we were, you know, it was just, it was, I, would, I wouldn't say it was effortless because a lot of hard work, but it, it was so much easier. So I think with these nine minutes, plus I'm going to structure them in a way that hopefully won't require as much work as, the previous 31 but yeah I've, I've got some really good ideas for scenes to uh you know i don't want to use the term pad out because that just in, in, implies filler material i've got um like i said i wanted to we want to do the introduction sequence so we definitely do that but also um i i, I you know I, i'll say that because i want to speak to do sound about that but yeah just a bunch of scenes to expand on little story elements throughout the return of faker so that's so, the plan. I, so, I really think we can yeah. do something pretty magical. And also it hits that amazing 40-minute mark. So you can say, you know, we're in the same league as a Christmas special. But you know what I mean? It's, it's that double episode length. 31 minutes was yeah. a, a lovely number. Um, initially, it was supposed to be like 21, 22 minutes, which is traditional episode length. We end up going to 31. So it's like, let's take it to 40. Let's do a proper, almost like made-for-TV special. So, yeah. And so just to clarify and kind of round up yeah. without giving anything away, the, the nine new minutes of content or what's going to take the current 31-minute runtime up to 40 minutes would include stuff like expanding current scenes, um, additional scenes, depending on what it might be, yeah. and uh, maybe exploring an intro Easter egg variation or, or fully animating the intro. Can uh, Is that something yeah, that you're throwing out there? I mean, we, we would fully... We would fully animate the intro but like i say with little touches to make it our own in a way but and also kind of go back to what they originally planned for the intro so yeah that's that's the that's the plan that's the plan uh legends of grayskull here says he he freeze frames the list it's just your grocery list james and apparently you're out of mangoes <laughs> sneaky so good it was <laughs> <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. The other cool thing is if we hit this 80,000, it's like, okay, well, sure, everybody gets nine more minutes of return, the return of Faker, which is great. But our production team now gets also to film some more content that's getting produced like today versus having to talk about what was done then and you rely on archival footage and, and process stuff that's been done. We get to follow the, the last kind of leg of of all these changes that's going to happen. So that's a really nice um, process bit for, for us to cover from the documentary side of things that I think is pretty integral. And I've got a lot of questions about why you're choosing to do um, the choices that you'll be making with those additional scenes and the padding and in the intro. And we'll save it for when we roll. Yeah, of course. That's, of course. That's, that's the new rule and stuff. But I think it's very intriguing from the story point of view to see you go back and add stuff. And I think that's going to enhance the documentary as a result while giving everybody else, you know, uh, an extra 25% of, of the film or 30%, I suppose. Uh, 80,000 was a tough number to come at. We had talked about 85. We had talked about 70 and 75. We clearly have no idea where this campaign is, is still going. Joe Amato is the only one with a crystal ball at the moment. He's the man who knows. Um, the all-knowing Joe you know, Amato, yeah. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, we ultimately thought, you know, if we went 85, is that, is that pushing it? Could, could we do it and justify the time and the expense to, to cover it if we hit 80? Cause now that's more filming that we've got to do on the documentary side, which is where this is going. And that means you've got to undertake all this stuff, which isn't connected to the campaign at all. Uh, and let me just underline that again. We're not yeah, trying to sell the return of Faker. You have promised independent of the Kickstarter campaign. If the Kickstarter campaign hits this goal, you will do this uh, of your own volition, and which is just kind of gravy for everything that's, you know, promised as part of the Kickstarter. It's the same with uh, the um, with the offer I did with um, people over a certain tier. Hey, your name's now going to be in the end credits. The Return of Faker. Like the, the end credits were done back in 2019, but I thought, you know, for people that have donated a certain tier, what about a nice reward? That actually pertains to the return of Faker. So yeah, again, on my, on my own back, or my own kind of thing of, hey, that seems like a really good idea. You know, how about it? So yeah, that's um, just another little incentive. <laughs> we did, you know, kind of toy about the idea of, hey, what about including someone's likeness in the return of Faker? And I thought that just yeah. presents a whole host of problems. I think. Don't get me wrong, yeah. Sam can do filmation likenesses. His his artistic touch for. Um, taking someone's face and making them filmation is pretty incredible. So it's like the likeness issue, that wouldn't be the issue. It's how do you suddenly put someone in a story without them standing out like a sore thumb. If you've ever, if you've ever seen Brave Star the Legend, the incredible filmation uh, movie Brave Star the Legend, which is probably next to Flash Gordon's The Greatest Adventure of All Movie, is the, the, the two best things filmation ever did in terms of production and visual quality. And Tom Tatter and Owitz directed Brave Star the Legend. And in one scene, when uh, Brave Star first arrives on New Texas and has his first kind of one on one interaction with uh, Tex Hex in the middle of uh, the, you know, the, the town, as it were, they're in, this one, they're in this interaction. And there's this one shot where you see a crowd shot, and the crowds really do stick out like sore thumbs because, <laughs> and, and Tom Taylor and Alex admitted, like, oh yeah, I, I basically put my fishing buddies in this one shot. And there's all these people that suddenly don't look like your traditional filmation style characters. Like Brave Style was full of really intricate design. It was far above, you know, Filmation's Ghostbusters and He-Man and She-Ra in terms of character design. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like a shot and it just pans along all these people that are clearly based on someone. When I first, first saw it back in you know the 80s, I just thought, oh, these are people that worked on it. And I, uh, luckily, I got to spoke to Tom T, and he said, "Oh no, they were my fishing buddies." It's like, ah. <laughs> so I think that's the problem. You well, don't wanna, James, you don't want to take people out of it, but isn't there at least one or two moments? I, I think it's a Shira episode, and you can a hundred percent correct me, and I know you will. Where it starts with the storyteller reading the book to a group of children about something that happened. Am I am I making that up? No, that, I mean, I there's, like there's, um, up. there's a there's a He Man episode, not so blind, where. The storyteller is just telling the adventures of He-Man. There's a She-Ra episode. There's two episodes of She-Ra that start off with someone telling a story. One is Bo in Above It All and Bo in, oh my goodness, The Crown of Knowledge and Madame Raz in The Crystal Castle. So you've got those as, as those kind of little um, structured stories. But I don't think there's, I can't remember one where someone's reading from a book unless... Unless you get Alex Hawkey on here, the she Rex, but it'd be like, oh, I know the exact. I was like, I don't think. Right. That. Yeah, you may have had a dream, Rob. It's it's possible, but did everybody else see that moment where the gear and the light bulb just went off in James' head and that switch activated and he oh, was sorry. instant like, <laughs> like, like master's mode where he's just like, well, actually, <laughs> like it just it all started to compute and you were breaking it down and going like line yeah. by line of every different episode. Um, well, I mean, maybe we can explore a stretch goal where we have a static pan and there's a crowd of people, James, and maybe that's an add-on. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll be. see where we go. Let's get we're to 80,000 first. We're going to discuss and see what we do. Rolling. Yeah. <laughs> they never stop rolling. That's the clue. That's the clue. They <laughs> never stop. This is on. When you go to sleep at night, I whisper in your ear, good night, James. I know. And but the, the odd thing is, I kind of enjoy that. So I'm like, and I just cuddle up. You know. Just yeah, here we go. This, we got, this is more we like got, a confessional now. Yeah, we have Brian chime in here. It says, Madam Raz is telling a group of yeah. children the story of how she found the Crystal Castle. There you go. Yeah, there's that so, one. Yeah, that thing. Uh, but yeah, that's the $80,000 stretch goal. And like I said, right now, folks, we're at 824 backers, $76,321. And apparently 50 cents. 
is is now a thing as, as part of that? that that 50 cents has always been a thing I, I i keep going like where did that come from but the 50 cents has been present since day dot of like very early in the campaign I, i'm guessing there's a currency conversion roundup somewhere that is carrying over 50 cents so yeah that would make sense that would make uh, sense <laughs> It's much appreciated. I'm also just going to quickly take a look at our community standings. Uh, the most backers now hail from Los Angeles, James. Oh, 20... LA in the house representing. Was that backwards? There you go. That's, You've that's got right, the symbol yeah. and everything. 22 yeah. backers are from LA, and 20 backers are from London in the United Kingdom. That's crazy. I don't even know 19 other He-Man fans in London, to my knowledge. Maybe like one or two, but I don't even think they know about the campaign. So... Who knows? And on the countryside, 554 of our backers are from the United States. And the United Kingdom comes in at second at 86. What's our third? Canada at 49, and then Germany at 37, followed by Australia at 23. Those are some good, like, I mean, Germans are one of the biggest he man well, probably one of the most tightly knit and well structured communities online have been they were the first ones to have he-man conventions back in 2000 2001 it's crazy but long before right you know val did power con uh, the germans were doing grayskull con and again turnier con was another one so yeah thank you germany yeah <laughs> go germany not never really said that often or often enough on on a live stream from somebody in london in the uk uh no. the last thing i wanted to talk about was the add-on that we're going to add to the campaign. And the, I always promised something. We had explored stuff like the retro slide viewer, which has now been added, uh, which is your fun little view master throwback. We, we looked at action figures for all of 48 hours and decided we're not going to do that. But then we thought, what could we do that would be fun keeping in line with the Saturday morning culture, uh, the cartoon vibe, the, the feeling of being a kid, uh, and you know, always on my list was a cereal box. And when I told you, you're like, yes, we need something that's sugary, good fun that we can put as part of the campaign. And I said, well, I don't want to have to ship a giant cereal box <laughs> around the world. You no. know, that's a little impractical, especially with shipping charges and whatnot. But I thought a lot of people are asking for DVD slip covers and in cases for their Blu-rays to put in. I thought, James, what do you think about designing the cover for this cereal box that doubles as a DVD Blu-ray slipcase? And what if, like when we were growing up, there was a free prize inside or a couple prizes or something cool that we don't tell people and they have to wait until they get it uh, to see what's discovered in there. And they could also put you know, their DVD or Blu-ray in there as well. So you thought that was a pretty cool idea. I, I love think. the idea. Yeah, I was like, yes. Uh, and then I said, you know, the, the, the cereal boxes that I really like that are kind of cool and in the same vein are those Funko ones. Oh yeah. And you said, yeah, I really love the Skeletor one in particular. I said, okay, go away. Go design something that you think is really awesome because I want you to be the one that design it because I think it ties in to the campaign. Uh, it just, you know, coalesces. And then when we do a live stream, we'll show it. So I'm about to click the button and show everyone. Just James's rough draft right now. It's He's been busy doing a bunch of our other stuff. But I, I absolutely room. love it. Exactly. I love it. So here we go. So he's left the room as I show the rough version because he doesn't want to uh, acknowledge it. But here we are. We've got the four Funko Pop cereals on the left, as you guys can see. And then on the right, we have McCallum's Flakers, as he's, as he's <laughs> put it there. And he's got James himself eating a giant bowl of sugary cereal with a faking filmation shirt and a faker-like character. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm told, James, that you're going to make this figure a little bit more nondescript, a little less uh, on the nose. Yeah, I, th I think we, I think legally bound to. So I just thought, yeah, I, I can do a faux barbarian character with blue skin and things that make him not look like a certain character that we all know. <laughs> so yeah but I, yeah i came up with this idea like you, you'd kind of set the, the the thing of like do it do it kind of like this and i was like okay so yeah i just went away and and then the mccullum's uh, flake when i went on google images just looking at cereal box i really want to create that 1970s or 60s 70s kellogg's white box corner thing where they would always have the name of the cereal in the corner so yeah. i just thought oh man instead of kellogg's i could just write mccullum's and then and then i think you'd suggested like flacos and i thought I thought, what about flakers? <laughs> it just like frosted flakes. I thought, ah, oh, frosted flakers, just flakers. Yeah. Go. 
This is all your genius at work here. All I said was a cereal box, and I like what Funko has done. So okay. you have to take credit, credit on this. Um, I think it's going to be a really cool case for the for the DVD and Blu-ray. And, uh, you know, there'll be a, a cool comic burst on it that says, you know, free prize inside. And I think, you know, some lucky backers at random will get some interesting prizes. Maybe those backers at random might get uh, an autograph of somebody that we interview. So we, we're going to collect a bunch of autographs and I think we're going to do some promotional uh, like coasters or something that'll say like faking filmation, something easy that we can slip into the box and it'll be signed by one of our interviewees. Uh, we'll have them print their name so you can see who it is as well. But those will be random. I can't promise uh, everybody's going to sign something for me. Uh, it's always a weird position when you put somebody on the spot and say, hey, can you sign this? Usually everybody's happy to do a, a couple things. Like on Power of Grayskull, we had four pieces of art that we had everybody sign that we interviewed and we gave one away to our highest backer on that campaign. Uh, we don't really have anything like that in this yet. And I thought it'd be a lot more fun and fitting if people opened this, this cereal box and found, you know, an autograph from like Erica Scheimer or even James, you know, I think that would be a really cool kind of experience to, to provide for people and make them feel like a kid again. So uh, yeah, just, just some fun. I just thought, you know, how can we make this fun? We've done really well uh, on the financial support side and, and the emotional support with people sharing it. I, this is not about, you know, making a ton of money. The add-on is live on the campaign right now. It will be included for free with everybody that is at the $99 tier or a higher tier. Uh, but the add-on itself, I think, is only like $12. So it's super cheap. It's easy to add. Uh, it, again, this is not about gouging. It is limited to 500, I believe, right now. And we've got over 800 backers. So not everybody is is going to be able to get one. But, you know, that's that's more of a printing and logistic thing. If we yeah. go 500, it, it costs us a little bit more per unit until we hit like 1,000. And that would be a lot of things to print. So if you want one, Add it onto your pledge. It's super simple. It's 12 bucks. I think it's, you know, even the shipping, I think I put $2 for the US because it can go with all your other goodies because it's not much bigger than a DVD or Blu-ray. And then everybody else in the world is only like, I think, three or four bucks to go out with that package. So uh, fun add-on and a, a good, cool final thing, I think, to add as we're now less than a week away before this campaign ends. Yes, it's crazy to think we're like approaching the end. But I think... I kind of wanted to pick up something you said there is just that with every add-on uh, you've done, it has been kind of closely tied to 1980s cartoons growing up, that whole thing. And obviously, you know, especially with He-Man and stuff. So, you know, mini comics and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just the, the, the entire flavor uh, to use an outdated 1990s hip hop reference um, is it's all intrinsically night, you know, it just feels like Saturday morning cartoons. It's that, which is what you don't suddenly want like, Oh, the, the free thing you're going to get is this. And it's like, what does that have to do with anything? You know, James Etoch sings the blues. It's like, I don't understand. <laughs> this makes no sense. <laughs> the faker blue. Oh, the blues. Oh my God. Like faker. Everything, everything comes back to faker. It's simple as that. So, yeah, um, yeah I think I, I, that's what I, I love about the campaign as well is seeing it kind of blossom as we have from what we thought it was going to be to what it's become. And on the way, just all the kind of things we've been able to, primarily you've been able to say to people, hey, you're going to get this. And what about this? And how about this? And I, I it, it, it's almost like this should be a documentary about the Kickstarter itself, because that has been a journey in itself, like compared to, you know, where we thought it was going to end. And it still has yet to end. And obviously the campaign has yet to end. But yeah, it's been, um, yeah, very, a very uh, lovely experience. Yeah. It's going to be strange in a week's time when this doesn't happen. Uh, I will say that I know we, we will obviously continue to talk frequently, but chatting back and forth with you, James, once a day, sometimes twice, sometimes in the morning and at night, yeah. is, is just lovely. To, it's just that kind of check in, like, here's where we're at. Did you see this? Did you see these comments? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, always this, <laughs> it's always the same thing every day. Like, oh, my God, now we're at this number. Oh, like, did you see this? Like, why? how did we get to this number? And all it's nice day, to share that with somebody. <laughs> As I said, the other day when I promoted, I said, I've just done a promotion. 
and we went like a hundred dollars down and you were like no more promotion <laughs> <laughs> you're like i just made a post and i just and i sent you a screenshot of like a canceled pledge i'm like don't post anything anymore no more promotion from you james we need the numbers to go up not down so like, no more <laughs> Uh, we're getting a lots of, lots of chats, uh, comments here. Uh, Nathan saying, "Oh my God, that's awesome!" Thomas has sold a James autograph. Uh, what about some digital artwork so we can print ourselves? You know, we can probably figure that out as well. That's what about good. trading that's cards? Good. That's another one. Another another person says, uh, "Trading cards have to come with a stale piece of gum." Uh, <laughs> yes. How about a fake faker sword add-on? Uh, you know, the add-ons are done. This is <laughs> we are done with a week to go. This is where it's going to be for better or worse. The prizes itself, it could be a number of things. I, I ideally want to add two things in there for sure. Um, there's not a lot of margins here. So for me to add anything on, it's like, okay, how is this actually going to benefit and profit for the film? Not just break even, uh, especially with shipping costs and all that crap. So uh, there's two things I want I want to add. I, we're going to have to cost them out, and that's going to depend on how many people actually select the add-on, plus what we're guaranteed to make with everybody that is at the $99 tier or a higher tier, uh, and that's uh, regardless of their, of their add-ons as well. So we're going to have to cost that out and see what we can do. It, it might be two small things. It might be one more elaborate thing. Leave it with us. That's why we all want to say free prize inside. So when you open it or people start posting online about what they got, it it could be a cool kind of thing. Like when you have like Halloween candy and uh, you know you bring it, look what I got at, at this house. Did you get this? Oh, I got like three of these, that kind of thing. So um, I, I admit, hope I, to I, do. I was going to say, I will admit, I really did like the idea of a trading card. Uh, I, that would be something I could easily create, uh, produce, really cheap and like include in some way like the idea of a, a very 1980s even if it was um like a you know a kind of random uh kind of digitally aged uh top trunk card or something or something you know from or like almost like a garbage pal kids sticker let's let's incite let's it let's make some more illegal things garbage pal kids stickers but like the return of faker and that garbage pal kid font with um yeah i, I don't know i just i just feel that the trading card thing is like a really nice 1980s kind of thing if it was just like you could produce a bunch of random ones and include them with the dvds and it would be you know like um who was it used to produce all the uh it, it was tops wasn't it? it produced all the trading cards in the 1980s yeah. like here's the tops so peachy yeah yeah so you could do something like that where it's just like scenes from the return of fake with a little caption at the bottom you know he man attacks faker and then on the back it's like blah 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 blah, blah. I, I think that that's something i could feasibly um look into and do without breaking the bank well we will have to talk about that i love the enthusiasm also, i love the idea, idea. <laughs> okay i love the idea of a james he talk figure but what's oh, your God. idea <laughs> nobody needs to see that ever <laughs> uh do you have any last uh, thoughts or comments that you want to throw out to people before we wind this up james oh my goodness i'm um, just thank you for all the um yeah all the all the pledges all the lovely words all the support um please keep you know sharing and supporting because um yeah it's not done yet we've still got what seven days left we've got a week left and it is you know you, you think oh you well, you hit your goal and then you hit your next goal and then you hit your next goal it's like yeah don't get wrong we've hit we've hit those goals but the more we get the better the end result will be as simple as that you can you can do so much more with money as simple as that it's like, it's <laughs> You know, yeah, you could, it's you it's could. all about time and resources. The yeah. the film will get better, and you know people are saying are are asking me. So you know how big is this going to be, and what platforms is this going to be on? And you know it's nice when you can say that up front, but then that kind of puts you in a box. And I want to see where the the journey goes. You and I have talked. Depending on what happens and what transpires, and how long it takes to capture everything, this might be a like four episode thing instead of a two hour thing or a ninety minute thing. Uh, it could be a six episode thing. It could be like the best 90 minutes uh, of, you know, of the story could be the ending thing. It's, it's hard to say, but I can tell you definitively the, the more cash we raise, the better the product will be because we'll have more time to shoot more and craft it and invest in it. Well, that's it's the, just that's that the beauty. Simple. When we're at that $30,000 mark, you know, initially it was, oh, you know, we'll probably do stuff via zoom or Skype and it will be, or, you know, we'll send the cameras over and stuff. And it'll be high end. As, or as best you can with that technology and then it's like you hit 50 
So, oh no, I think we can probably start flying places. And then you get to the next thing. It's like, yeah, well, we, we can definitely be more, you know, you can come over here and we'll film you in Los Angeles or, you know, we'll come over yeah. there. And it's, it just, it makes the end product. You know, it's, it's simple, isn't it? Money equals good stuff. So it's, I would hate to see on. this film. Yeah, I would hate to see this film without us shooting in the UK. Oh my god. We goodness. have yeah, to go to the UK because yeah. that's where you live. That's that's you, you know. And uh, frankly, it just adds to the journey of what you're trying to do and where you're going. So we have to start in the UK and we'll probably have to end in the UK. And to try to capture everything that is the United Kingdom via Zoom uh, or cell phone footage that you shoot while listening to me through an earbud with Skype or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the difference between thirty and fifty thousand dollars, folks. That that there allows us a huge bump up, and from fifty thousand to wherever we go, uh, that's the more attention that we can do. I, in you know, people that have seen my work know that I'll invest money into big sections like that because it, it really does elevate the value. We'll invest heavy in graphics if it makes sense to do that, or or travel if it if it pays off. Now, stuff like PowerCon is fantastic for interviewing fans and creators, so we'll we'll be leaning on that. Uh, and other shows like that. We also hope to basically say, hey, we're going to be in this city. Who is around yeah. that wants to come interview for a day or two or something like that, and then we'll be able to capture you. Uh, that's another great way just to make the most of travel dollars. But lots happening. Um, thank you for everybody that's been watching this, uh, everybody that's in the chat. Great ideas that I see up there. You know, uh, Joe Amato wants me, us to do 10 metal exclusive lunch boxes with 3d holographic images on them joe we're not at seventy nine thousand dollars yet i i can't hear any more <laughs> suggestions uh and when we hit 78 like 999 and that's where it ends i want to see that mask come off and then we'll put that face on the lunch box um <laughs> thanks thanks everybody you guys are awesome i am floored with the support as always I don't know exactly when the campaign ends. I think it's at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time next week. So if that's the case, I'll try to do a live stream uh, the last hour leading up to it. And if I can convince James to come on and say hi for at least a bit of that, I will. But let's count down the campaign together and see where we end up. Sound yeah. good? It sounds fantastic. Cool. I love the idea of actually doing a live stream of as the campaign ends. Because then The best what? is that, that 120 the minutes. Well. <laughs> yeah, the 120 minutes. Uh, when you have two hours left, it starts ticking down minute by minute. So you see it on the campaign page as it auto refreshes. And it's this sense of impending doom. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's the yeah. sense of impending work. Cause it's like, all oh, right now, now all the work has to begin. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. This is true. It, that's a good problem though. I'll take the good problem. You're the yeah. one promising nine extra minutes. If that's we hit 80,000, like, if we don't, you got, do you don't got to do shit, man. You just got to sit back and. Draw your little cereal doodles and you're, you're it good. It's so easy. And then I said, oh, I've got a good idea. I'll take nine extra minutes. It's like, oh. We'll cool. never hit 80,000. Yeah. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, James, for coming on and uh, being a good sport about all this. We will talk soon, I'm sure, my friend. And of we course. will talk to all of you as well on all the social platforms. Please keep sharing the links. Even just letting people pledge. Tell them, look, 20 bucks, $19. Just 19 for $19, you too can have faking filmation and the return of faker plus all our glorious bonus footage that we'll be able to create out of this thank you so much everyone we love you cheers